Neshaw Valley. And it'd been pretty much a running gun fight uh, for about two months. Uh, May 10th, I think, of uh, 1969, Hamburg Hill started, uh, probably the most famous of the battles there. And again, we were involved in kind of a running gun fight in that uh, general area for about two months. On the 11th of July, early in the day, we'd made contact uh, about 10 kilometers from where this actual battle occurred. But simultaneously, our sister company uh, was ambushed, uh, kind of a U-shaped ambush, on the exact same hills that Hamburg Hill occurred on. Um, it was clear that they were in danger of being completely overrun. Uh, so our company was called, my company commander chose our platoon uh, to be air assaulted in an area along a ridge line where we could get up to where they were at. When we got off the helicopter, the company commander uh, got us all together, uh, gave us some very, uh, I think demonstrated leadership extremely well in terms of he gave us uh, the information we needed to know. Uh, that we were going up that ridge line, that we were going to get to Delta Company this evening, uh, or that we're going to go back up there in the morning and bury them. Uh, the situation was that severe. When we initially advanced, the four guys behind me were hit by machine gun fire. So it's pretty clear that we're, we were in danger of not being able to accomplish the mission. Uh, so I moved forward to try and put a field of fire down to clear to the medics could get up, get to those four guys. I saw an opportunity, was able to spot where the bunker that initiated that fire was. Saw an opportunity to try and advance on it. I uh, was able to get up to it, silence that bunker. At that point, I thought we were actually home free. So I stood up on top of the bunker, was you know waving to the guys uh, behind me telling them to come on up. Uh, at that point, my rifle was shot by a, a bunker that had covering fire. I grabbed one of the AK-47s that uh, they had in the bunker I'd just taken out and used it to, to go up to a second bunker uh, and get it and then continued on to a third and a fourth bunker. I uh, was able to then get to where the battalion commander uh, was located. He'd been killed, but his XO who was wounded there gave me a lay down on the situation that they had there. It became pretty apparent I needed to get some of their wounded from an area on the west side of the perimeter they were trying to establish, pulled back, and I was simply figuring our platoon would get up there uh, soon enough. Once we kind of got that settled down there, uh, my company commander and the platoon got there, and we were able to secure the perimeter for the evening. I don't take any particular pride in it. Uh, what I have pride in, as with any of the other awards, and this is the peacetime awards I've received, and uh, as well as the combat awards, you know, I take pride in the fact that you know the folks I served with thought me worthy of having them, you know, and that I did my job well enough to to, to earn their respect. So the company commander that I had. Uh, was a born and raised Georgia boy. And one of the things that they did, of course, was hunt birds a lot and stuff like that. And apparently, I always walked point uh, for the unit. And I guess the way I uh, did things seemed to attract his thought that I was operating like a bird dog out there front and the front trying to flush out birds or uh, something in that line and stuff. I, it's odd. I, I really took offense to it right off. I was uh, 18 years old and uh, liked the thought of someone calling me something like that. Uh, today I have a great deal of pride in that. So. I've maintained my membership uh, with the Lebanon Ohio Post. Uh, it's the very first organization that I went into. They uh, honored me with a lifetime membership. Uh, they're very, very active posts, particularly with the younger folks uh, in the community. Uh, they use the American Legion Hall there as kind of one of the primary points that, uh, you know, uh, high schools hold their dances and, and different things like that. And they really have a, just a, an open arm to the, to the entire community there. So. The American Legion just seems very focused in the communities. At least that's my experience uh, there in Lebanon, Ohio. That, they really reach out. They're very uh, focused and involved with little leagues, all the other stuff there. 
Uh, and when you come from a small town, like where I came, came from, so if that's extremely important, there's uh, normally not organizations that you know have the numbers, the number of members and stuff that can reach out like that. So, you know, my wife uh, is always calling it bad luck, but it seems like for years and years I was deployed right when the inauguration was occurring. And if you're in Iraq and you're in command of a battalion, you don't want to leave them to come back and, and enjoy this, even though your soldiers really want you to uh, and stuff, it just doesn't seem right and stuff, but off and on, uh, any opportunity I've gotten to come, I do. In 1973, I simply walked around to the backside uh, of the congressional building there and was standing there with uh, a Nikon, I think it was a DF, or no, I'm sorry, a, an S6, and took my camera and put it right at the window as uh, President Nixon was walking by, probably wasn't six feet from the car. And you can imagine today just a person out there uh, being able to do that, and it just doesn't happen. So, great opportunity, you know, to, to uh, you know, enjoy the camaraderie uh, of the other recipients, but also to see the military leaders uh, of our country uh, and get to uh, chat with them a bit, uh, see how they're doing, uh, how the soldiers of today are doing and stuff. And uh, it's just something we can all take great pride in.